Okay, this is another in this series of videos for Fusion 360 beginners. The idea is they're just exercises. It's a way to get good at sketching and turning those sketches into 3D uh, bodies. The, we're taking a technical drawing each time and turning it into a Fusion 360 design. So here is the one for today. It's a safety key and um, I'm just gonna get right into it. So let's go to uh, document settings and it looks to me from the numbers here that this is in inches. So I'll change the units to inches and hit okay. And then I'll create a, uh, a component. The first thing I always do is create a component and I will call it safety key. The reason I'm creating a component and not just starting in is because even though this is just a single body part that I'm uh, modeling, there's a chance that maybe I start uh, adding more components to this and, and um, that would require uh, that each of them is in their own component. So just starting out by making a new component is always a good idea. Create sketch and I'm gonna do it on the front work plane here. Uh, I think for this, I can probably um, do everything with two sketches and that's how I'm gonna do it. And so it's two sketches, but multiple extrudes from each sketch. The alternative, I mean, well, there are lots of alternatives. So it's kind of just however you wanna do it. This is how I like to do it. Make one sketch that contains all the information I need for that direction and then uh, extrude multiple times. So we'll take a look at how I do that. I'm gonna use a rectangle to get that feature that's on the left. And instead of just fudging it as I usually do, I'm just gonna type in the numbers since it's easy with a rectangle to do that. And then I'm going to create some other lines for the rest of this thing. I don't know what that dimension is necessarily, so I'm not going to type it in. I'm just going to kind of fudge this. Okay, so uh, there is an overall dimension. I'm going to create that dimension of 4.7 inches. And uh, I know the height here. 1.12 so everything's fully constrained the last thing is to add that circle for the hole and i'll have to put in some dimensions for that so the first thing is i know that it's 0.5 in diameter this distance is 0.56 and the distance from here to here is 1.38 Okay, that's the whole thing. So if I were, again, if I'm looking at a silhouette from the side, that's how it looks. Oh, and actually, you know, let me go back into the sketch because I think I can get that notch that's on the edge there. So let's do that. So let me draw, If again, if I'm looking at a silhouette, then this would be cut out. So let's make that notch. Okay, so uh, this dimension here is going to be 0.76 and the distance from here to here, oh, sorry. Distance from here to here is going to be 0.44. Okay, now I've got the actual um, silhouette. So let's go to the home view and I will just extrude. Now I like extruding from, you know, out away from me, but those are negative numbers. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, I will put in negative 2.4. Now, uh, if the sketch has disappeared at this point for you, um, you'll see it here as being hidden like that. That's the default for Fusion. And I mentioned this before, but if you go into preferences and choose design, there is a, a, a setting here, auto hide sketch on feature creation. It's on by default, but I like to turn it off because I'm often doing this multiple extrusions from a single sketch. So it's inconvenient for me to have to turn it back on each time. I'll click here and hit extrude again. And I know that I want to extrude it, uh, what's the dimension? One, 1. 1.4 inches. So I can actually just drag it over. Uh, but it's, it's doing it from the sketch profile plane. So where the sketch is. And before I've chosen object here, and that allows me to click something and say that's where I want the extrusion to start. In this case, I'm going to choose offset because I have an actual value in the drawing. It's negative 0.5. And that's that. Join means that it'll create one body instead of making these two separate ones. So that's what I want. Hit OK, and I can rename my sketch and hide it. So it's called front, and I'll just put it away. Uh, we can see there's just a single body here, and uh, those two got joined together. So this is uh, pretty close. This is getting close anyway, and now all I need is to cut some things from the top. So let's do that. I will create a sketch and choose this 
top work plane. Now, again, you could create a sketch here instead, but uh, it's best uh, to kind of go as far up the, the hierarchy in the browser as you can. So the origin planes are better than planes on the body. Uh, sometimes it just makes sense to draw it here, but I'm gonna choose this work plane as the uh, location. Now, I would, I would like to reference, though, these different edges. Now, even though I'm highlighting them and it looks like I can uh, kind of grab them, in my sketch, if I try and make a line, it'll be impossible to kind of have it stick there. So I want to be able to reference all of those previous edges as sketch curves. So I'm going to hit P for project. And in the past, I chose body. But what you'll see is you can kind of see it here. It outlines the body. It's kind of bringing in sketch curves for the silhouette of this thing. And I want to also be able to reference this edge here. So instead, I'll choose specified entities, and I'll just click each of these parts. And that means all of those edges will become sketch curves in my, in my current sketch. You can see they're purple, and that's because they were projected in. So let me draw the rest of the stuff I need. This is like, uh, oops, OK, sorry. Uh, Let's try that again. So I'll choose line here, and I'm just going to make it awkward. Okay, and uh, I will fix that with some constraints. So that's horizontal, that's horizontal, and then I'm going to draw a line from here to here, and here to here. You know, I'm doing it odd here because I don't like how this um, red axis things gets in the way so this way i can see what i'm drawing and i can see that it's landing in the right place and it's it's trivial for me to just go back and add those constraints so that's just that's how i like to do it but it is a couple extra steps you can do it however you want okay so some dimensions here i know that the distance from here to the edge of the body is 0.4 and the size of this whoops try that again the size from here to here is 1.4. Uh, the distance from this edge to the bottom is 0.5. And that one's all set, so I'll turn black. Uh, the size of this slot is 1 inch, and its distance is 0.7 from here. That's all set. It's all black. Um, we've got the last thing we need is um, to cut out this triangular area and also uh, to cut out the notch. So let's, I think the triangle starts out here. Now it's trying to make a, a midpoint constraint, and I, that's actually convenient. So I'll let it do that. And um, then I'll draw the other line here and land in the same place. I do want these to be vertical from each other. Again, you can fusion can add constraints for you as you're drawing sometimes you would you think it's going to add a constraint and it doesn't because it's just helping you by inferencing so that's why i like to explicitly add the constraints myself um, i'm going to add a dimension for this 60 degree angle and uh, i think that's it that's already black and because i made that 0.76 if i click from here to here you can see it's 0.76 inches i made that cut in the first place so that notch will be taken out um, automatically I guess when when I make this extrusion so that'll make sense in a second when I do all the extrusions I think this is it I'm gonna hit finish sketch and let's do some extruding so I'm going to take this profile here I just hold down the button to be able to access it even though it's in the back there and I know that I want to cut this all the way through. There's also a couple of others that I want to cut all the way through. This one, and this one, this one, and this one. Those are all going to go all the way through. Now, anytime I'm going to extrude, I kind of get it started by dragging the arrow. That way I know it's um, not going to flip and go the other direction. Sometimes I'm working in negative, sometimes positive. So it's helpful to just see it as 0.4 here. But in this case, I'm not actually going to put it a distance I'm going to have it go all the way through let's hit OK and now we're pretty close to being done the last thing is to make this one part here so I'll do one more extrusion and that's of this profile uh, in this case I am going to start not from an offset but from an object I want to start from the top of this and go down so I'll start dragging it down 
and that is 0.4 so actually it's jumping in tenths of an inch so I can just drag it down to 0.4 and hit OK. I think that's it. That's the design. So uh, I will rename this to top and uh, hide it and I've got my whole thing. Let me know if you see anything that I made a mistake on. I think it looks right, but uh, there are always a million other ways to do this. And again, I have this kind of preference to for making a sloppy drawing and explicitly adding constraints more efficiently. Can you do this faster? If you have a job where you're trying to do this as quickly as possible, I think you might be able to take advantage of uh, the auto creation of constraints and uh, just typing the dimensions as you draw them and get it done a lot faster. But this is kind of how I do it. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier to teach this way as well. So that's it. Take care.